Hello there. So the EU Parliament probe into alleged Qatari bribery to politicians and officials, now dubbed as Qatargate, begins to increase in scope. Now, if you haven't already done so, please do subscribe and then like and comment below. The Belgian police have already arrested four people over Qatargate and the amount of cash they found has climbed to over 1 million euros. Remember, that's just the cash. The number of premises raided has increased to 20, 19 homes and the offices of the EU Parliament and at the moment the central figure to this is Greek socialist MEP Eva Cayley whose father was found on the move with €600,000 in cash in a suitcase and another €600,000 in cash was found in the house of former Italian MEP Antonio Panzeri and €150,000 were found in what are being described as luxurious travel bags in the home of Eva Cayley. And as I've pointed out before, former MEP Panzeri was the chair of an EU Parliament Human Rights Committee and the president of an anti-corruption NGO called Fight Impunity. But Panzeri is considered by investigators as the leader of this whole group, according to reports. On top of that, Belgian police have also raided the home of a so far unnamed Belgian MEP and computers have been seized and frozen to ensure no data is lost. Further, it is expected that more arrests will come in the next few days. Now, the Express says the following. In truth, European law makes it infuriatingly difficult to report on such matters and the EU has remained distinctly coy on naming names. What? Are we saying that EU law makes it easier for the great and good to hide their nefarious activities? Now one person who knows quite a lot about all of this is Nigel Farage and in one of his latest videos, he points out that he was targeted five times for investigations into allegations of misspending EU funds. And he said, I feel this very personally. For years, myself and my colleagues were put through hell by Olaf, the fraud office of the European Parliament. I went through five big inquiries. Even since we left the European Union, I had another legal case, a very expensive legal bill to prove my innocence after I was accused of misusing public funds. They never ever found that I had. But funny, isn't it? Every time there was an investigation, they told the Times newspaper before they told me. And yet all of this has been going on at the heart of Brussels for years. So when it's reported that EU law makes it difficult to report on these things, it should ring the alarm bells that the EU is very selective about justice and proper procedure. Talking about this, Paolo Gentiloni, the EU's economy commissioner, said, This is a very serious attack on the reputation of the European Parliament. If it is confirmed that someone has received money to influence the opinion of the European Parliament, I think it will really be one of the most dramatic corruption cases in recent years. No wonder they're calling it Qatargate then. But I would reckon a lot of those Brussels politicians and Eurocrats will be sweating in their boots right now. Now, if Boris Johnson or Nigel Farage were to set up a not-for-profit institute to campaign for global change, saying they would put their teams of people in governments and organisations around the world to act as agents for change, there'd be lefty uproar with screeching and tears across the whole press. Can you imagine one of them starting a global pressure group saying... Our global team works in more than 20 countries across four continents to support leaders with strategy, policy and delivery. And talking about their thought leaders providing fresh analysis, practical policy solutions and embedded support in response to the world's biggest challenges. 
and all driven by the vision and insights of their leader, Farage or Johnson. Can you imagine it? Now there's an idea. But when Tony Blair sets up that exact same system, no one turns a hair. Yes, the Tony Blair Institute is all of that I've just outlined, the Tony Blair vehicle. And now that 66 million quid a year in revenue institute is going a step further. It's setting up a lobbying office in Brussels. Yes, it's going to develop build and nurture strategic partnerships with the Eurocrats. Presumably to help them in their push to keep the UK fully in lockstep with EU laws and regulations. And maybe help them with how to deal with their internal corruption problems, maybe. The Tony Blair Institute has advertised for a head of public affairs based in Brussels to help deliver the ambitions of the Tony Blair Institute. In fact, the ad says this new role will be the focal point of its activities in Europe and critical in delivering TBI's ambitions. And one of those ambitions will probably be the re-entry of the UK into at least the EU Single Market and Customs Union. Now, where Brussels lobbying is concerned, according to The Economist, by 2021, Brussels was the second largest capital for the dark arts of lobbying in the world behind Washington. With 25,000 lobbyists with a total budget of 3 billion euros. And Tony Blair has decided to elbow his way in. Now... Are British drivers beginning to ask questions about electric vehicles? Are they becoming a little more sceptical about what they are being forced fed with? Because it's being reported that the demand for both new and used electric cars is beginning to wane. Now, there is a lot of talk about the cause being the increased cost of electricity, as well as the cost of living crisis causing people to pause their decision to purchase. But when people are faced with news that within the next few years, their electric vehicles will be taxed in the same way as petrol and diesel cars are taxed today, and that their electric vehicles will be charged per mile of travel, and that congestion charges will apply to them as well, all to replace lost tax revenue from internal combustion engine cars, then maybe people are asking what are the real long-term benefits of electric vehicle ownership for them. And then there's the problem of power cuts, it's dawning on people that if we haven't the electricity for our houses, then how can they guarantee on being able to power their EVs if they do get one? Maybe potential EV buyers are saying, let's wait and see. And finally, when subscribing, please don't forget to press that little bell and also select the all option or you won't get any notifications when I publish a new video. And thank you all so much for taking the time to watch the show.